Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now ever since AMD released their Ryzen APUs, I said I planned to see how far into the future they could run new AAA releases. Since then I made the mistake of lending the Ryzen 5 2400G to a friend who is apparently about as useful as an inflatable dartboard because they managed to break a couple of the pins. So until I can find a replacement, it's all about this, the Ryzen 3 2200G. With the Battlefield 5 beta now in full swing, I couldn't resist the chance to see if our budget focused friend here could run the game with respectable performance. While the final version of the game may differ in terms of performance, this should give us some idea of what we might be able to expect come November. Now because I believe anyone who is opting for one of these APUs will be on a tighter budget, I've paired mine with 8 gigs of 2400MHz RAM, which here in the UK at least can be found quite a bit cheaper than the faster clocked memory. Not only that, but I wanted to focus more on a worst case scenario type situation, sort of like if it's playable on slower RAM, then it'll only be better on the faster stuff. So enough chit chat, let's take a look at how Battlefield 5's open beta runs on an entry level Ryzen CPU with integrated Vega 8 graphics. So I started with the Narvik Arctic map and tested the game at 720p, 900p and 1080p. Immediately it was clear that we'd have to opt for the low settings. Now at 1080p with 100% resolution scaling, which we stuck with throughout, the game averaged 35 frames per second. Pretty impressive for an integrated GPU solution. There was some stutter though, as represented by random moments of slowdown, but these didn't happen too often, and if I'm being honest, I think 1080p is a little too challenging for this configuration, unless you were to either turn down the resolution scaling or just the resolution. So that's what I did. At 900p, things felt quite a bit smoother, with an average frame rate of 43. The 1% lows and 0.1% lows were also a bit better too, which of course meant less in-game stutter. But I'll let you into a little spoiler, the next map we'll be testing, Rotterdam, seems to perform a little bit worse. Before moving on to that though, let's go way down to 720p for another slight increase in performance. While it's not as significant of a jump between the 1080p and 900p performance, every extra frame is of course a nice bonus. Again, there was less stutter, so in my opinion, I'd go with either this resolution or 900p, but you'll probably have to stick with the low settings. I'm not sure if this would be the case with faster memory, especially considering the GPU is maxed out at 99 to 100% usage most of the time. The onboard Vega 8 is definitely the weaker part of this APU, but of course I would be interested in seeing what sort of results you could expect with the 2200G and faster clocked RAM. Moving on to the second beta map, Rotterdam, and once again I started off with 1080p. Here we barely touched on 30 frames per second as the average, and there were quite a few more frame drops which isn't surprising considering that this map is comprised of a more built up layout. The less open the map, the lower the frame rate seems to be. That being said, capping the frame rate 230 in this case would help smooth things out a little bit, but just like the Arctic map, a lower resolution would be the better bet. At 900p we saw a nice increase to the mid 30s, and at this point I think this is the resolution I'd probably choose to play at. It looks a little better than 720p and doesn't perform all too differently. Though of course if you were playing on the 2200G and you were playing online, you'll probably be wanting to maximise your performance as much as possible. Speaking of which, at this lower resolution the average frame rate is improved, but the 1% and 0.1% figures aren't too different, meaning we still saw some stutter. But what if we wanted to say try and eliminate more of these frame drops? Would overclocking this APU, both the CPU and iGPU in fact, give us a result that's much different? Well to find out I jumped into the Ryzen Master software which can be downloaded for free from the AMD website, and played around with a couple of options. Here I decided to jump back into the more demanding map, Rotterdam, at 1080p settings with the low in-game options, just like we did before, to compare to how it performed before the overclock, and as you can see, we did see a slight difference in performance. Of course, with an overclock, the options that you set are entirely up to you, so you may be able to squeeze a little extra performance out of this chip, but of course, as I mentioned before, faster RAM may also do the job. However, I was looking at a... Uh, 
sort of worst case scenario type situation here. And I think you could still get away with playing the Battlefield beta on this APU, if I'm being honest. It's not a terrible experience, but just bear in mind that you may have to stick to those lower resolutions. This performance may differ entirely to the final game, which launches in November. So we'll just have to wait and see, and uh, hopefully I'll have another Ryzen 5 2400G by then as well, and we'll be able to make the comparison once again, and see how the final release performs with an integrated Vega GPU. So there we have it. Now also remember that uh, you will need a more expensive B350 board to overclock the Ryzen APUs, but I think this one still did a pretty respectable job at the stock settings. So as for this video, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.